Hi friends, my name is Jessica and I'm a second year doctoral student studying nursing practice. In today's video, I want to talk about bringing nursing research to practice. So did you know that it takes 17 years to bring evidence-based research to practice? And this is so important because nurses are on the front lines and we are on the forefront. So we should be the ones that are implementing the evidence-based practice. And 17 years is just way too long for things that could benefit our patients today. During my doctoral research, I came across various articles talking about this. One of the articles gave the example Right now, in nursing practice, the best way to give an IM medication is not to aspirate before giving. However, for a really long time, nurses did aspirate before giving an IM medication. So the researchers looked at why is it that nurses are still aspirating when giving an IM medication when we know that not aspirating is the best practice. And to be honest, I think anyone in the nursing field knows that there are some nurses who aspirate and there are some nurses that don't. So why is this? So the researchers went in and conducted a qualitative study, which is when they interview various nurses. They asked the nurses who were still aspirating before giving an IM medication why they were doing this. And some of the responses were as follows. We've always done it this way with no problem. It's how we do things. I don't trust the evidence who did the study. I don't feel it will make a difference. There is lack of resources and evidence at the bedside. And these examples go on and on. I just chose some of them to tell you guys about. So this really brings up a problem, right? Because even when the evidence is available to us, it is difficult to get nurses to act on the new evidence-based practice because they are used to their old way of doing things and it can be very scary and difficult when people's lives are in your hands to tell you to do something differently. So how can we help nurses to feel empowered to use new evidence-based practice at the bedside? So the first thing we can do is we can make evidence-based practice meaningful. And here's an example. So when the research came out that placing babies on their backs were better than placing them on their bellies, certain units, the nurses were continuing to place babies on their bellies for the same reasons as the IM medications, I assume. What we can do is we can create meaning for the new evidence-based practice. So, so in this specific article, the nurses were still placing the babies on their stomachs instead of their backs because their argument was it reduces the risk of aspiration. What they did is they decided to create meaning. And to do this, they applied an O2 sat to the baby and they placed the baby on their belly and they showed the nurses the reading. They did this right in front of the nurses. And then they flipped the babies over onto their backs and showed the nurses the new oxygen reading. And this created meaning for the nurses because they saw how much better the babies were breathing on their backs. And after they did this, the nurses started placing the babies on their backs. So they created meaning. They showed that this intervention actually is helpful for the patients because as the nurse, it is difficult at times to hear the research, but if you don't fully understand how it's benefiting the patient, you know, sometimes as nurses, you feel like you are the protector of the patient, right? You're trying to heal them. You're trying to make them better. So just because somebody tells you something is better, if it doesn't have meaning for you, that you might not want to implement that because in your mind, it may not be beneficial for the patient, even though that's what the research shows. Which then brings us into my second point. In order to implement new evidence-based research, we as nurses need to understand the research, not just have somebody tell us, oh, this one fact. We need to be able to really understand what is going on in this study. Was this study conducted adequately? Was there bias? Was someone, some company paying a large sum of money for these researchers to come to this end sort of conclusion? There are all these different things which is totally unethical but does happen there are all these different things that we need to look for as nurses however 
Let's be honest, nursing is super tough. Most people don't want to come home and decipher research articles. They, you know, they want to relax or they have families, they have children. So what can we do? What can hospitals do? What can nursing do as a profession? What we can do is we can assign nurses on units to be the evidence-based practice leader. And what this means is their role is to look through the current research in that area of nursing and to find this evidence-based practice and bring it to the unit. And they can display it in different ways, such as posters on the unit. Uh, there can be emails, um, just things like that. Somebody that can look at the evidence-based practice and be able to present it to the unit to help kind of break it down and make it easier to understand for people. Another idea would be if there are a bunch of nurses on the unit who are interested in evidence-based practices to start something like a journal club. And what this would be is you read an article related to patient care and you then discuss it. And that is another great option and that can be something that can be done over Zoom while people are at home. But again, you do need a, a group of nurses who would be interested. I mean, I guess you could do it with two or three. Um, but, you know, I don't know how big your unit is or things like that. But by assigning an evidence-based nurse to a unit, it can really help to start to bring those new evidence-based practice to the forefront of nursing. So this is just a discussion that I wanted to have with you guys because I think it's really important as nurses we understand this information. I mean, when I read this, I was shocked. 17 years to bring evidence-based research. That means that this research, so I don't want to get too much into it, but with research, there are different levels of studies. There's actually this pyramid. I will try to insert it here. There's a pyramid at how adequate research is and, and what it means and how much weight that it holds versus the type of study that it is, right? So the top, top tier study is a meta-analysis that's going to look at a bunch of different studies. It looks at studies from different researchers, different settings, different populations, and comes to, you know, compares and contrasts those studies to come to a conclusion. So say it's something like aspirating IM medications. What this means is they're gonna look at as many articles as they can find about um, if it's beneficial to aspirate or not aspirate, which may lead to a large group of people. You know, you're not gonna have 100 people. You might have like 10,000 people. So this statistically, they hold way more weight. They look at tons and tons of people and they, they're really meaningful and really significant for evidence-based practice. So these evidence-based practice nurses wouldn't be like going off and just finding one article. Like they're looking at the most advanced, important research that had, holds so much weight and we know. So once these meta-analyses come out and we know for certain that this is the better patient care way for us to conduct nursing practice, it takes 17 years. That is the lifetime of, of an adult. That brings you from childhood to an adult. That's just crazy to me. You think about your family members who have different disorders. Maybe you yourself have a different disorder. When you go into the hospital, you want to know that you are being provided the best evidence-based care available. I wanted to have this discussion with you guys because you're clearly interested in education. You wouldn't be watching this video. You're clearly interested in research and bettering your nursing practice. And this is the important information to know because once we're aware, we can feel empowered and encouraged to really advance our practice and to maybe look into the research and find the best way to be doing things and bring those to our nursing directors and bring those to our nurse managers or our nursing colleagues because we can benefit not just our patients, but the patients in our entire unit, our actions, our research. So I hope that this kind of implanted a little seed in your brain to always just be on the lookout for the new best thing and be open to the research and the evidence base. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.